Okay, so now we got this certain trigonometric identities relating the delta S and the delta Y and the delta Z. Now we can substitute these equations into the one over here, okay, because we, we want to eliminate the trigonometry function. So what's delta S sine theta? Delta S sine theta is delta Z. So we can write the pressure at Y, delta X, delta Z, okay, take away the pressure at S, okay, delta X, making the substitution, we got delta Z is equals to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction, okay? Now, the algebra is appearing quite friendly now because I will re-express the mass. Now, what is the mass? The mass is the density, okay, times the volume, right? Now, what's the volume? The volume is the same as over here, given by this quantity over here, which is delta x, delta y, delta z, divided by 2. That's the, the volume times the, the density times yeah, that gives us the mass times the acceleration due to y, okay, in the y direction. So we got delta um, x, delta z, take away delta s, delta x, delta z. Now, we will eliminate this factor dividing by the delta x and delta z. So we eliminate over here, and finally, the equation we have is the pressure at y minus the pressure at s is equals to, okay, the, the density times the acceleration in the y direction times by delta y divided by 2, okay? So that is one equation that we have here. There we go. So now we want to deal with the second equation, which is the acceleration in the z direction. The z direction over here. And likewise, we do the same thing. We would just use the trigonometry um, uh, inequality, sorry, the trigonometry identity that we have. So the pressure at z, delta x, delta y, minus the pressure at s, delta x. Okay, now delta s cosine theta becomes delta y, okay? Yep, and take away the, the specific de, uh, specific weight, delta y, delta x, delta z, divided by 2 is equal to the mass and the acceleration in the z-axis, okay? Acceleration in the z-axis, like so. Okay, so now we will again do some cancellation. Now the mass can be re-expressed as, okay, the density times delta y, delta x, delta z divided by 2. Basically, it's just the density times the volume. So the mass can be re-expressed as that and we can divide throughout by the delta x and the delta y. So we eliminate this, we eliminate this, we eliminate this, and we eliminate this, okay? So now, what, what does it become? It becomes the, de the density times the acceleration in the z-axis times delta z divided by 2, okay? And this now becomes pressure z you take away pressure at S, take away the specific uh, specific weight times delta Z divided by 2. And that is equals to this one over here, okay? Resolving um, in the Z direction and simplifying, okay? So this is the second equation that we have, okay? Now, we will just erase this and let's see what we have, okay? Now, using a very simplified version of the differential couplers, okay, when, when I saw this, I got a bit shocked because it's really simplified. Okay, we will just simply let the, all the delta terms tend towards zero. Why do you want to do that? Well, because the delta term is small. So as we uh, make all the, the delta terms tend towards zero, notice that all these forces converges, converges at this point over here. Okay, so we will just all, you know, move all the forces into to this point over here and that's what we want to do. We want to analyze the force or subsequently analyze the pressure that acts at that point over there. We are dealing with pressure at a point. Well, from the, from the look of it, we got one equation over here, we got another equation over here. So if we let all the delta terms tend towards zero, we'll simply have Py take away Ps is equal to zero because the, I don't see any problem in letting delta x tend towards zero. Likewise, for here, delta z tends towards zero, delta z tends towards zero, okay? These terms will cancel out, so we will get the pressure at z take away the pressure at s is equal to zero, okay? And from here, we can immediately conclude that the pressure at y is equal, uh, the pressure at z is equal to the pressure at s. Okay? Does that make sense? So, what does that mean? That means that it doesn't matter, okay, the plane we will pick to, to analyze in which the pressure is acting. Okay, I say again, it doesn't matter um, that at a certain point in the fluid, we pick a whatever arbitrary plane. Remember, we started out with a red shape in which theta is arbitrary. So basically, theta can be any value at all, okay? We did the analysis, we did resolving of forces, and this is what we got. 
that this pressure here, this pressure over here, okay, this pressure over here and the pressure over here are all the same. They're all the same here, given whatever theta, okay, because we will let the, the delta terms tend towards zero, so we're analyzing the pressure at that point. So, in conclusion, as we have a, a, a fluid flowing in a, in, a, in a tunnel, okay, if we pick a plane that's like that, the pressure acts in this direction, we pick a plane that's like that, the pressure acts in this direction, we pick a plane like that, the pressure acts in this direction, the pressure would be all the same, okay? So the pressure at a point of a certain fluid are all equal um, given whatever plane we choose to analyze the pressure, or simply put, the pressure at a point are same in all directions, okay? So there we go, okay?